the evidence that you have overcome your situation is that your situation does not overcome you. Greetings in Jesus' name and welcome to another edition of Faith is Natural here on God's Heart TV. Today, I want to address an issue that I've been asked about many, many, many times over the years. And it, it's something like this. As a Christian, why do my problems persist despite my prayers? I've, I've played my own role. You know, I go to church, I've prayed, I've fasted, I've, I've received prayer. I've received prayer for deliverance. I read my Bible, I, I claim the promises in the scripture and I really strive to please God. But why can't I seem to overcome this problem? <sighs> People of God, just as God created each of us to be unique, in the same vein, each situation we face is unique. So there's no single message that can address every situation. But the answer, of course, lies in the Word of God. Today, I want to share with you a very valuable and important truth that I believe will help you. As a Christian, overcoming your situation, and when I say situation, I mean it could be in your your finances, your health, marriage, family, business, career, just name it. As a Christian, overcoming your situation does not necessarily mean that situation will change. <laughs> no, the evidence that you have overcome your situation is that your situation does not overcome you. Let me repeat that. Overcoming the evidence that you have overcome your situation is that your situation has not overcome you, has not taken you away from God, has not misled you to sin. You see, it's common today for us to equate overcoming our situation to, to a change in that specific circumstance. So for example, we equate overcoming hardship to receiving financial breakthrough, or, or we equate overcoming uh, sickness, affliction, to receiving physical healing. But remember, as Christians, we walk by faith, not by sight. So the evidence of overcoming is in the spirit first, not the natural, the spirit first. Remember, God is spirit and your real value lies in your spirits. So the evidence of overcoming is in the spirit first, not the natural. Now, I'm not saying that God cannot sovereignly, supernaturally intervene and change that situation in your life. Of course he can. There is nothing impossible for God. I'm just stressing to you that your present condition is not a means of measuring your spiritual life. Overcoming hardship does not mean getting rich. <laughs> no, it means not being ruled by that hardship. Yes, I, I may have hardship. And yes, I'm seeking God. I'm seeking divine intervention. But no matter how hard how long is that hardship? It will not mislead me into seeking alternatives outside of Christ. 
no, no matter how difficult is that difficulty, it will not deceive me into taking steps outside of God's ways. No matter how painful is that pain, it will not break the flow of joy in my heart and prayer in my spirit. That is how you overcome. That is how you overcome. And when the blessing comes in God's time, according to his master plan, just as hardship does not rule you, so too the blessing will not rule you, but the giver, God. So as Christians, we are not immune to trouble. <laughs> no, in this world, there will be trouble, but we are not ruled by it. We are not exempt from challenges. There will be challenges, sometimes prolonged, persistent challenges, but we are not to be controlled by them. People of God, I want to remind you of that famous story in the Gospels in the book of Mark, uh, chapter 4 from verses 37 to 40. The story about when Jesus Christ calmed the storm. And I want you to take note of something. Jesus Christ was calm in the midst of the storm before he calmed the storm. The storm was raging around him, but not within him. Fear did not overtake him. Worry did not overwhelm him. Anxiety did not overthrow him, no. He mastered the storm because the storm did not master him. But on the other hand, look at the reaction of the disciples. Look at their response. They woke Jesus up, they said, Master, don't you care that we're drowning? Don't you care that we're about to die? Don't you care? This is a picture of what happens when your problem overcomes you. You begin to see God in a bad light. God, don't you care that I'm sick? Don't you care I'm in pain? Don't you care that my, my business is about to go bankrupt? Don't you care how they're treating me unjustly at my workplace? Don't you care? Why is God allowing this to happen to me? We begin to question God's goodness and query His ability. And even, even if we do approach God, even if we do run to the house of God, it is often to submit our prayer requests out of panic, not faith. People of God, I want to share with you a secret to overcoming. The recognition that it is not all about you. It's not about how you are feeling how you are doing, how you are treated. No, the central character in your story is God, for you are created for His glory. So redirect the focus from you to God. Instead of asking, why is God allowing this to happen to me? Change the focus. Why is God allowing this to happen to me? Because if God allows it, if God permits it, it's for my good. Perhaps there's a lesson he wants you to learn that is necessary for your future, for the responsibilities he has for you tomorrow. Perhaps he is humbling you under his mighty hand. 
perhaps he's refining you so that you come forth as gold. Perhaps he's building your character for the greatness that lies ahead of you. Look unto Jesus. The extent to which your, your problem, your situation misleads you to worry, to fear, to anxiety, to discouragement, to alternatives is the extent you place something else above God in your heart. Usually yourself. So, people of God, in conclusion, let us look unto Jesus, for He is the light of the world. Today, we are close to a, a lighthouse, <laughs> a beautiful lighthouse, and well, we recognize the importance of a lighthouse in the dark, not when the the, the sky is clear and the sun is shining. No, it's in the darkness that you know how important, how life-saving a lighthouse is. It is in the dark moments of your life that you will come to recognize, to appreciate, to value the light. Jesus Christ. Jesus is the light of the world. He will illuminates your paths and eliminates your fears. He will provide you the strength to overcome, the peace to persevere, the grace to keep pressing whatever your situation, whatever your situation, know this. If that situation sparks your spiritual life, you are an overcomer. Right now, let us pray together. Jesus Christ stood in the boat in the midst of the storm and declared calmness. Right now, whatever storm that surrounds you, whatever storm that rages around you, I declare calmness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let there be calmness in your marriage. Let there be calmness in your family. Let there be calmness in your business, in your finances, in your career. Let there be calmness in your health right now. Calmness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. To every troubled heart, to every disturbed heart, receive the calmness of Christ. Receive the calmness of Christ right now. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Whatever represents darkness in your life, let there be light right now. Let there be light right now. Let there be light. That sickness is darkness. That setback is darkness. That limitation in progress is darkness. That nightmare is darkness. I command you to come out of darkness. Come out of darkness right now. Let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be light. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you, viewers. God bless you for joining us for today's edition of Faith is Natural. Please share with us the, the lessons you learned from today's message in the comments below. And remember, continue to seek God's heart to see life. 
clearly in Jesus' name.